we, we look forward to working with the IPA over 2013, but the IPA also does important work of its own, and I will invite John now to give us a short snapshot of what IPA is going to do in 2013. Over to you, John. Thank you, Andrew. It's always a um, problem when you have fathers of young sons speaking to you. Andrew spoke about what uh, uh, was keeping him up awake uh, at night. I can reveal to you that what kept me awake last night was my three-year-old son uh, putting a very delicate part of his anatomy between the toilet bowl and the toilet seat <laughs> as he was learning to toilet train himself. But it's an exercise in initiative <laughs> and self-reliance. Uh, the IPA man-cow relationship is very significant for the IPA and I think very significant uh, for, for Australia. Ron Manners uh, is an absolutely great man for freedom. Uh, where is Ron? Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. <laughs> and quite appropriately standing next to the great woman for freedom as well in Australia. And, and standing next to two great women for freedom in Australia. It's a uh, very significant relationship and I'll talk about uh, that in a moment. We, uh, uh, we value uh, the advice and counsel that of course the former executive director uh, of the Institute of Public Affairs, John Hyde, uh, provides to both uh, uh, the IPA and to ManCal. Um, and we're also honoured uh, tonight and I want to recognise him here because he's come from Melbourne uh, for this event, Hugh Morgan who of course needs no introduction to you, is a great supporter of the IPA, is a great supporter of Mancal and has been a great supporter of freedom uh, over many years in Australia. The Foundations of Western Civilization program is something that basically came about as an initiative of Ron. It is a program that Mancal and the IPA uh, has together to look at the philosophical and historical traditions of our culture in Australia. And that is basically the Western canon. Uh, as part of that program, we ran a very sim important symposium a number of years ago. I'm pleased to announce uh, tonight that next year we'll be bringing Roger Scruton to Australia, the British philosopher who's probably the leading conservative philosopher in the world um, at the moment. As, as part of the program, we have undertaken a, a searching critique of the national curriculum, and uh, as a result of the work of Mancal and IPA, uh, the Federal Coalition and Christopher Pine, the Shadow Minister, uh, has committed to fundamentally review the national curriculum that every child uh, in Australia is going to be taught under, and uh, outstanding people like uh, uh, Stephen here will uh, uh, tell you about uh, how the national curriculum denigrates Christianity, denigrates capitalism, denigrates self-reliance, promotes big government and basically uh, challenges most of the precepts that we hold dear. It's a very important program. Uh, we have a monthly email update. We have regular publications. Uh, and please go to the Mancal website or the IPA website where you can find out more about the program. We were thrilled that uh, last year Murdoch University and Mancal ran a very important freedom of speech uh, seminar and conference. Freedom of speech in Australia, you don't need me to tell you, is under attack in a way it's never been before. Uh, the idea that there could be a government regulator of the news the idea that under the guise of the Anti-Discrimination and Human Rights Bill, uh, telling a joke about Julia Gillard or Tony Abbott uh, or the West Coast Eagles, because I'm from Melbourne, uh, <laughs> could be, or I back for Western Bulldogs, so Jenny and I uh, would find offence if you told a joke about how hopeless we are going to be this season. Um, because that could be a joke about our social origins or our political opinions. And under uh, the draft bill provided by Nicola Roxon, uh, if someone was offended or insulted uh, on the basis of their political opinion or uh, social origin, uh, you could have been dragged to the Human Rights Commission. 
Thankfully, because of the work that we've all done in this room, uh, the, the government has committed to amend the bill. Uh, no sooner did they commit to amend the bill than Nicola Roxon resigned. And uh, we wait to see uh, what will happen next to the bill. But uh, our joint work on freedom of speech and freedom of the press is very, very important. And we were delighted to support the, uh, the Murdoch conference. And that's going to be happening again this year. Uh, just four or five hours ago in Canberra, you might be aware that uh, Steve Conroy announced uh, the latest draft changes to uh, media regulation in Australia. Uh, while the, uh, the worst aspects of the Finkelstein Review, which was basically going to appoint a news media council to regulate the news, have been abandoned as a result of our work, uh, we have some proposals that are nearly um, just as bad. The government is going to regulate the press council. Uh, if you want any of the statutory protections available to the media, you're going to have to be a member of the press council. And uh, this is, in the IPA's view, licensing by stealth. Uh, the IPA continues to work on climate change. Uh, it's very significant that the Tony Abbott the Leader of the Opposition has, of course, committed to repeal the carbon tax. Uh, but the IPA's view, and I know the view of many other people in this room, is that every single aspect of the disastrous climate change policies have to go. Not just the carbon tax, not just the Department of Climate Change, but the renewable energy targets uh, that make Australia's household electricity literally the most expensive in the world. And, uh, and I know that there are many fantastic people uh, in this room uh, fighting the climate change debate, and uh, Perth is a bit of the centre of climate change science, and uh, it is a privilege to be in the, pe in the uh, same room as people like uh, uh, Joe and David. Uh, finally, uh, Andrew mentioned our work on, on Project Western Australia. The next step of that is going to be looking at the legitimate role of government. We're going to be benchmarking what state governments should be doing, what they can be doing well, uh, and what they're not doing uh, so well. Uh, we think this is an important part of re-establishing federalism. Uh, federalism and everything that goes with federalism, divided government, more controlled by citizens, is, is absolutely uh, essential if we are to maintain our freedoms. Uh, in closing, I'm looking forward to the IPA taking Mancal interns uh, in due course. Uh, the idea uh, that not every young person is a raging ABC Q&A listening greenie uh, is really uh, significant. I think we're starting to communicate to the public that, as Neil Ferguson said, if young people knew what was good for them, they would all vote for the Tea Party. Uh, the young, if we talk about intergenerational equity and if we talk about looking after the next generation, it's the next generation, it's uh, people like uh, Andrews and my children who are going to be paying off the debt that most of the people in this room have incurred. So uh, uh, it's an absolute privilege to be working with Mancal and uh, uh, thank you for having me here tonight and I look forward to uh, a fantastic year with Mancal. Thanks, John, for those words. Uh, we, we look forward to uh, continuing our relationship and uh, the legitimate questioning or asking the question of the legitimate role of government with uh, Michelle and, and others.